Okay, today's lesson objective, we're going to be looking at 3.4a. Solve with fluency one step and two step problems involving addition and subtraction within 1000 using strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and the relationship between addition and subtraction. So here we have an example. It says Johnsonville Elementary School has two playgrounds. The distance around the larger playground is 678 yards. The distance around the smaller one is 321 yards. If Robert walks the distance around both playgrounds, how far would Robert have walked? So we're wanting the total distance that Robert walked. Okay, so that tells us we're going to be adding those two values. 678. 321. Okay, now if we're going to add these using place value, we got to think about what is the place value of each of these numbers. So let's add the like place values together. So here we got a 6 in the hundreds place and a 3 in the hundreds place. So we can add 600 plus 300. Okay. Here we got a 7 in the tens place and a 2 in the tens place. So we could add 70 and 20. And here we have an 8 in the ones place and a 1 in the ones place. So we could add on an 8 and a 1. And this total should give us the answer to our problem. So 600 plus 300. Well, that makes 900, right? 70 plus 20. That gives us 90. And 8 plus 1 gives us 9. So now we're just going to simply add those together. So 900 plus 90 is 990. 990 plus 9 more gives us a total of 999. So you can see that using our place value method for adding numbers together can actually make the addition a little bit simpler. It almost makes it where you can just about do it in your head, right? Because you're just adding numbers like 600 and 300 together, 70 and 20, 8 and 1. All right? Uh, but again, that's based on the place value of each digit. That's how you figure out what these values will be. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, same problem. Okay, still doing the 678 yard playground, 321 yard smaller playground, and we're still walking around both of these, and we want to know how far. Okay, but this time we want to use the properties of operations. Okay, think about your different properties of operations. You have the commutative property, which allows you to rearrange the order of values if it's all addition. Um, you have the associative property that allows you to group um, different parts of the problem together, okay? So primarily, let's see if we can use those two to help us here. So again, the original problem, 678 plus 321. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna leave the 678 alone, but we're gonna break apart the 321 into just 300, and then plus 21. Doesn't change the problem at all. You're still adding 321 to 678. You're just breaking it apart. Now, once we've broken this apart, let's add these front two together. Okay, so we're going to use our associated property to add these together first. So 678 plus 300. So kind of like we did earlier, you got 300 more onto 600. So that's a total of 978. And then we just have to add the 21 more. Now you could break the 21 into 20 and 1 if you like, if that helps. Um, or you can just add the 21 if you want to do that. So if we add the 21 to 78, okay, so 1 and 8 makes 9, 7 and 2 makes 9, we still end up with the result of 999. Okay, so again, we, we used 
uh, property to uh, decompose our numbers. Here we're decomposing 321 to 321. We used our associated property to group these front two together, added those together, and then we added our um, last part to it at the end. Okay, and you can decompose the numbers as much as you need to to make the math simpler. So again, I could have broke 21 into 20 and 1 if that would have helped me out. All right, here's one more method for adding. Um, addition based on the relationship between addition and subtraction. So again, same problem, all right? So we're going to be using these values here, and we're still walking the total distance around both playgrounds. So we have 678 plus 321 is our problem. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, 321, that's pretty close to 300. In fact, it would be 300 if I took away 21 from it, right? So I'm going to actually subtract 21 from this number, okay, so that I can make 300 here. But so that I don't change my problem at all, that 21 I took away from here, I'm going to just stick it over here with this number. I'm going to stick it over here with the 678. So this doesn't really change the problem at all. It just moves the 21 from over here to over here. And so here you get 699. And now this problem becomes a lot easier because now I'm just adding 300 to 699. So again, I just look at my hundreds place, add 3 to the 6, and I get a total of 999. Okay, so we're using that relationship between subtraction and addition that says if I subtract it from one of my add-ins, then I need to add it to my other add-in. So I try to pick a number, I try to get this to a number that would be easy to use later on, which was 300. And so whatever I had to do to get it there, I just do the opposite to the other number so that it doesn't change the problem at all. The problem stays the same. And then now that I have my easier number, I can finish up the problem. Okay. So now we've looked at three possible different ways to add three-digit numbers together. Let's look at some that tie to subtraction. It's the same three strategies, but we're going to see how they relate to subtraction. So here we've got a little bit different problem. It says the Chamber of Commerce is hosting a craft show on Saturday and Sunday. Zach and Samuel made 596 decorated bookmarks to sell at the craft show. They sold, so we made this many, they sold 462 of those bookmarks on Saturday how many bookmarks did Zach and Samuel have left? So we're looking for how many did they have left to sell on Sunday. So there you can see that's a subtraction problem, right? We want to remove the ones that were sold on Saturday to find out what's left for Sunday. So the original problem here would be 596. And we want to take away 462. Now, just like we did with the addition, if we want to use the place value method, we're literally just going to subtract each of the matching place values. So here we have a 5 that represents 500. And we get a 4 that represents 400. So we're going to do 500 take away 400. Okay. Now, the next part we're going to subtract is we got the 9 that represents 90. And the 6 that represents 60. So we're going to take 60 away from 90. And then our final one, the 6, is in the 1's place, and we're going to take away this 2 that's in the 1's place. Okay? Now when we're done, we'll have to combine all our pieces together to see what our final answer is. So 500 take away 400 leaves us with 100. 90 take away 60 leaves us with 30. And 6 take away 2 leaves us with 4. So these three pieces combined tell us what's left after you take away 462 from 596. So 100 plus 30 is 130 plus 4 more, we get 134. So there are 134 bookmarks remaining for to sell on Sunday after you subtract the 462 from 596. So again, this is a nice easy way to get nice easy numbers to work with. You're just taking the place value for each of the digits and subtracting the like place values. Okay. All right. Subtractions 
using properties of operations. So again, our commutative and associated property we were referring to earlier. Um, slightly different problem here. The Chamber of Commerce is hosting a craft show on Saturday and Sunday. Um, this time we made 865 beaded earrings. So we made that many. And we sold 250 earrings on Saturday and another 115 on Sunday. So wants to know how many does she have left for after the craft show? So again, how many does we have do we have left? So for this one, we got 865. And we're going to take away. You can think of this of one of two ways. You can either take think of this as I'm going to take away 250, and then I'm going to take away 115 after that. All right, so I'm taking away Saturdays, and I'm taking away Sundays, and I'm trying to find out what that equals. Uh, the other way you could think of this problem is we could say this is 865, and we're subtracting the total of 250 and 115. So we can combine the two days that we sold beads and then subtract that from 865. So it's kind of whichever way makes more sense to you, whatever is easier to do for you. Now, again, using our property of operations, um, we could decompose some of these numbers to make the math a little bit easier um, for both of these, honestly. Uh, if we do this top one here, maybe we leave this as 865, but we break this apart into taking away 200 and taking away 50. Okay, maybe that's a little easier for us to understand. Um, and then we might say take away 100 and take away 15. Okay, so what order you decide to subtract those in is totally up to you, but the idea is you guys subtract each of these values from the original 865. So I might start by subtracting the 865 minus the 200 to give me 665. And then if I want, I can rearrange this to do the 100 next. And then maybe do the 50 after that, and do the 15 after that. It's kind of up to you, whatever looks easiest. So if I take away the 100, I'm left with 565. And then if I take away the 50 from 65, you're left with 515. And now all I gotta do is remove the 15 from 515, and I can see the result is 500. So she will have 500 beads remaining to sell after the craft show. Okay? So that you're decomposing the numbers and then using your properties to allow you to rearrange the order of the numbers that you're subtracting uh, to make the subtraction easier. Okay? As long as you still subtract all the parts from the original total, it's fine. You're allowed to do that. All right, we could do the same thing here. We could um, add these two together by decomposing them if it makes it easier to add them or using the place value method if that makes it easier. And then whatever total you get, um, subtracting that from 865. Okay, but we get the same result. All right, I want to look at um, the last method here, which is doing it using the addition and subtraction relationship. So here we got, we made 732 jars of jam. To sell to show, we already sold this many, and so the question is how many do we have left to sell on Sunday? So it's same, that problem we saw earlier, just different numbers. Now, just like before, um, I'm going to do something to this 294 to make it a much easier number to work with. So you notice 294 is really close to 300, right? All I have to do is simply add 6 to it to get to 300. Well, the thing is, if you add 6 here, to keep the problem the same, so you're not changing the problem, you would need to take away 6 from this side. So we do 732 minus 6, which gives us 726. Now, it's still a subtraction problem. We didn't change that. We just uh, moved 6 from here, till we, or we removed 6 from here and put it over here. Now, we're going to subtract these. Now, we're taking away 300 from 726. That's pretty easy to see that we're left with 426, right? You're taking away 300 from 700. So that's using the relationship between addition and subtraction to move it from one place to another place to give us a much more compatible, easy number to use. All right, this uh, concludes our objective for today. Thank you for your time.